been doing? I just been running up and down this hallway just yelling because because I can. Oh, see, ha, nobody's here. Um, whew. Well, welcome. Uh, uh, glad to have you here this Sunday morning. Um, hey, don't tell anybody I've been running up and down the hallway yelling because I don't think Miss Ashley would approve. Uh, well, welcome here uh, this Sunday afternoon. My name is Mr. Patrick. Man, it has been a crazy, crazy few weeks, right? Maybe some of y'all have experienced cancellations like with uh, birthday parties or art classes or dance classes or uh, soccer, baseball seasons canceled. I know my girls' uh, track season and cheerleading competition at college and high school have been completely canceled. March Madness has been canceled. Dads are out of their minds. I mean, uh, you know, maybe y'all are disappointed or sad that you can't do what you used to do. Um, maybe some of y'all started online classes last week, or maybe y'all are starting online classes this week, and that can be a little anxious and change, and maybe you're a little worried, uh, disappointed again. Um, but you know what? Man, I mean, sometimes things can seem like a mess. Sometimes things can seem like it's out of control. But know this. God is always, always, always in control. Even if it doesn't seem like things are in control to us, God is always, 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 what is my hand doing? Always in control. He's always in control. In fact, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. God is always working everything together for our good and for his glory. And you might be going, Mr. Patrick, how is all this stuff being worked together for his glory? Well, maybe he's working all these things together so that we can know him better, so that we could grow closer to him. Maybe he's working all these things together so that we could pray more to him, so that we could write in our journal, so that we can memorize scripture, so that we could memorize the books in the Bible in order so that when somebody says, hey, where's Romans 8, 28? You go, bam, I know where that is. Maybe he's working all these things together so that we can grow closer to him. Maybe he's working all these things together so that we can grow closer together. Maybe he's working all these things together so that so that we can grow closer together, showing each other love and hope and courage and strength. Maybe we could write letters to each other. You see, as we grow closer to Jesus, we all grow closer together. Ah, see how that works? God is always, always, always in control. Now, give me about 10 seconds and I'm just going to go run up and down this hallway yelling just because I can. Hold on, see you later. looking just like a cabinet, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking just like a cabinet, isn't it? It's not looking like a cabinet. It's looking more not like a cabinet every single second. Uh, anyway, welcome to Sunday Afternoon Children Worship. My name is Mr. Patrick, and again, I'm trying to build a cabinet for Miss Ashley. I'm supposed to get it done by the end of today, and it's looking more like a mess, more out of control. Oh, uh, I hope she's listening to this uh, lesson of forgiveness today because I am going to need it after creating such a mess. I, I thought I had everything. I got a drill. has like a little light on the front. That's pretty cool. I got a, oh, I got a mallet. Yeah. Hit stuff. That'll help me build a cabinet, right? Oh, what about a, a this is like a hairbrush? No, this is, a, oh, this is a hammer. Yeah, a hammer, not a hairbrush. Oh, crazy me. Oh, an axe. Yeah, I don't know how an axe is going to help me build a cabinet. It just made me feel good. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I brought something to help me keep me level-headed. Get it? Oh, level. Yeah, you don't get it. All right. Man, I do not know what I'm doing. But you know what? There's a lot of do-it-yourself projects that I am sure you've seen your mom and dad do, like uh, do-it-yourself painting, fixing uh, holes in walls, or building a cabinet. I wish I had one of those 
people here. Maybe it's do-it-yourself fixing a car. Or maybe it's learning how to cook or learning how to play the piano or learning how to draw or dance. Da, na, 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 na. Or sing, which I don't know how to do. Or maybe it's learning how to, oh, do-it-yourself fitness. Yeah, everybody up. Fitness or running or, yeah, it's great learning new New stuff, do it yourself, projects, all that kind of stuff. And you know what? Today, this month, God wants us to do a do it yourself project. Don't worry. It's not building a cabinet. It's not building a cabinet. No, this do it yourself project is about forgiveness. It's deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. And everyone needs forgiveness because because everyone sometimes creates a mess and is a little bit out of control, Miss Ashley, right? I mean, everyone deserves forgiveness. But you know what? This do-it-yourself project, God doesn't want us to have to do it on our own. He wants to help us. He wants to give us hope and wisdom and love and strength and courage and self-discipline in order to do this do-it-yourself project of forgiveness. Because you know what? Everybody needs forgiveness. Everybody sometimes gets into a mess. And we're actually going to hear a story today about a lost son who definitely gets out of control. But before we hear the story, I want us to give this day, this lesson to God. I want us to put our hands together, bow our heads and close our eyes. God, we are so thankful to be here, God. We are so thankful to hear your awesome truth about how much you love us and how much you forgive us. God, just allow us to live this truth out loud in our life, loving others and forgiving others, God. Allow us not just to be hearers of the word, but allow us to be doers of the words. We love you, God, in your awesome, awesome name. The kids and the parents and the moms and dads say, Amen. Awesome, awesome. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to celebrate by singing. We are going to celebrate the greatness of God by singing one of my favorite songs of all time. It's our God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. It's one of my favorite songs. Don't worry. I know I can't sing. I'm going to put it up there on the thing on the screen. But I want everybody, everybody, even you in the back corner, I want everybody to stand up. Moms and dads and kids and dogs and squirrels and cats. I want everybody to stand up and celebrate the greatness of who God is. Come on, everybody up. Let's sing. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God. Cannot do. In the beginning, 
Wow, that was some great dancing. I saw some great worshiping out there. Now, we are going to check out our story about our lost son. It's in Luke. If you want to read along with the story, it's in, it's in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Check it out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds gathered. Often he would heal their sicknesses, but he was more interested in healing their hearts. Blessed are those who hear God's word and obey it. Important religious leaders came to hear Jesus, but everybody else did too. Moms and dads, shopkeepers and tax collectors, misfits and other people who did wrong things. The last will be first and the first will be last. The religious leaders were angry Jesus chose to welcome everyone. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew the hearts of the religious leaders. They believed that keeping all the rules made them closer to God than anyone else. So Jesus told them a story. There was a man who had two sons. Now, if Jesus were telling this story today, it might go a little something like this. There are two brothers. We'll call the older brother Will and the younger son, Jake. Uh, these two young men were just a little different from each other. Father, I finished planting the barley field, cleaned out the cow stalls, and fed the goats. All before breakfast? All before breakfast. Where's your brother? In bed. Jake, come get some breakfast. Uh, is it noon yet? I'm not getting up before noon. I need you to help your brother rebuild the shed. Don't we have servants to do that? Uh, I'm tired of people telling me what to do. I want to be in charge. As Jake considered, he realized that one day when his father was gone, his older brother and he would split all of the money, and then he would be at least half in charge. Why wait? I'll just take my share now. After breakfast, Jake found his father examining the damaged shed. I want my share of your money. You'll get it. One day. Nope. I want it all right now. The father studied Jake with sadness in his eyes. Then he decided to let Jake learn the hard way. All right. You can have your share. Woo-woo! So Jake took his half of the property in cash, and then he packed up and headed off to travel the world on his own terms. So long, suckers! After days of travel, Jake finally arrived in a country where the sun was warm, the breeze was cool, and the lake water was as smooth as glass. Ah. This is the life. <laughs> Jake rented a beachfront villa. Dude ate whatever he wanted. Pizza for breakfast, Twinkies for lunch, ooh, ice cream for dinner. <laughs> he threw huge parties and gave away lavish gifts. Oh, Jake, you're like so amazing. Wow, is this the new SolarWare 2020 gaming system? Well, you can have it, I'll get another. <laughs> Dude, you are the best. But soon, a famine swept the land. Food ran low. Huh. All I've got is ramen. I better go to the store. Jake checked his money pouch. It was nearly empty. Two pennies? But I had so much. Hey, uh, anyone have an extra PB&J? Um, like, no. Don't bug us. Jake had nothing left. At last, he was forced to work for a farmer taking care of the pigs. Sue-wee! Hey, pig, 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 pig. <sighs> Jake was so hungry, even the disgusting food scraps for the pigs looked pretty good. The crust is the best part of the sandwich, right? Or this? Don't you touch that there banana peel. It's for the pigs. <laughs> this is so not kosher. 
As Jake crouched down in that miserable mud with those pigs, he couldn't help thinking of home. My father's servants have more than enough to eat, and here I am practically dying of hunger. I should go home. I will go home. I'll say, um, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Yeah, that's good, right? Jake got right up and headed home. The journey took a lot longer on foot, and he was weak with hunger. Sinned against heaven, sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy. At last, Jake reached his hometown. Nobody even recognized him as he shuffled down the road, dusty and ragged. I'll just sneak into the house the back way. But as Jake neared his home, he saw someone standing on the porch. I really hope that's not Will. In an instant, the figure on the porch leapt down and began to run. The man raced down the walk and flung open the gate. Wait, that's, it's Dad. Jake's father ran along the dusty road toward his son. Dad, I, my son. The father threw his arms around Jake and kissed him. Jake swallowed hard and stepped back. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I, I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But Jake's father was too full of laughter and tears to listen to any of this. Instead, he hugged his son again and led him back to the house, calling for the servants. Quick, uh, bring the best robe and put it on him. Uh, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. And let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Wow, Dad, uh, I don't deserve any of this. I don't know what to say except thank you. So the father had freely forgiven the younger son, but the story wasn't over yet because Jake's older brother, Will, you remember him? He was out working hard in the fields, and well, Will would turn out to be far less forgiving than his father. Well, I love that story of the lost son. Man, he got out of control, didn't he? But you know, I was thinking, we get out of control too. Don't we make a mess sometimes? Come on, I want to be honest, right? We make a mess sometimes. Sometimes we get out of control. Why? Why do we get out of control? Hey, you in the corner back there. Yeah, we all make a mess. We all get out of control sometimes. And wh why? Why does that happen sometimes? Well, you know what? Sometimes we want what we want and we lean on our own understanding sometimes. And that's usually when we get out of control. You know it, right? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, so trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not a part of it, but all of your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Lean on God's and God will make your path straight. But I love this story because no matter how much the son got out of control, no matter how much of a mess he made, he came back to his father. And guess what the father did? What did he do? He welcomed him back. He rejoiced that he came back. He welcomed him back no matter how much of a mess he made. You see, Jesus told this story to let everyone know that God loves and forgives us. He welcomes us back. See, God is the father in this story, and, and he always welcomes us back, no matter how out of control we get. And he always welcomes us back, and we are the lost son in this story. Yeah, we are. We are the lost son in this story. And no matter how lost we get, when we trust in him, when we trust in him, when we trust in him with all of our heart and lean on, on his understanding, when we trust in him, when we come back to him, guess what God does? He welcomes us back. He rejoices that we're back. He rejoices that we are back. Isn't that great to know that God's love and forgiveness and promises never, never end. Isn't it great when we get forgiven in our own house? Sure it is, right? We can know that God's love and forgiveness never ends. But you see, God knew that we were going to mess up. God knew that we were going to get out of control and separated from him. He knew that. And from the very beginning, he set out a plan to send his one and only son, Jesus, to save us. That whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, will have eternal life with God, will be forgiven We'll be forgiven forever. We'll be forgiven. Isn't that great? 
But the thing is, is that forgiveness, that love, that forgiveness, that love is not just meant for you. It's not just meant for me. It's not meant for you in the corner. It's not meant for you in the other corner of the, of, of the camera. It's not meant just for your mom or dad. It's not just meant for me. It's meant this forgiveness and this love is for everyone. Everyone needs forgiveness. And, and the whole Bible has stories of hope and courage and love and wisdom and people that point to Jesus. And you know what God wants us to do? He wants our life and our story to point to that love and that forgiveness that we have through Jesus. He wants our story to point to that love and that forgiveness. He wants us to love and forgive others just as we are loved and forgiven. So, you know, so he wants us to love and forgive even when your little brother sneaks into your room. Yeah, he does. Even when your friend says something that hurts your feelings. Yep. He wants you to love and forgive. Even when your teacher gives you a lot of online homework. Yep. He wants you to love and forgive. Even when you get that one scoop of ice cream instead of two. He wants you to love and forgive. He wants you. And, 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 and today, today, what I want you to do is I want you to do something to be that story of love and forgiveness to somebody else. I want you to show love. I want you to help and serve. I want you to maybe help your little brother, your older brother. I want you to show that love and forgiveness to somebody today today maybe it's writing a letter to somebody at a at a nursing home i want you to show that love and forgiveness to somebody today so here's our verse it's put up with one another forgive one another if you are holding something against someone forgive just as the lord forgave you colossians 3 13 do something today and check out the verse Hey guys, hopefully you got that verse. Put up with one another. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3, 13. Now, before you go, I want you to do something for me. I want you to write a sentence in the comment underneath the video. And this sentence is going to be found in three verses that I have for you. And it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a sentence that's made up of a specific word in each of these verses, okay? So I want you to look up John 3.16, and I want you to take note of the first word. John 3.16, the first word. I want you to look up John 13.34. I want you to look up the seventh word in that verse. I want you to look up Colossians 3.13, the verse that we just learned. I want you to look at the tenth word. So it's the first word in John 3.16, the seventh word in John 13.34, and the tenth word in Colossians 3.13. Those three words will be put together to make a sentence that I want you to remember all week long, okay? We will see you Wednesday. I'll live stream something Wednesday evening. Time will be TBD, but it'll just be a midway, midweek check to see how you're doing and to see how I'm doing. Well, we'll see you later. Have a great Sunday, and I'll be busy uh, fixing this, uh, fixing this, uh, whatever it is. Oh, whatever this is. All right, we'll see you all later. Bye.